Welcome back and joining us on the show. And in the studio now is David Kelly. He's CEO of Natural Diamond Council. David, hi. Thank you so much for joining us and wishing you a very happy 2024. My first question is on the diamond demand within India as well, where the street is anticipating that it is going to grow from here. What does NDC think as in sense of numbers? So the market, particularly here in India, is very, very strong at the moment. Probably the fastest growing market for natural diamond jewellery in the world. Uh, so we are obviously very optimistic about it. And uh, there are a lot of trends happening in the world, a lot of trends happening around consumers, particularly young women. Uh, and, and so we, we uh, believe very strongly in the global markets and particularly India in terms of leading that. Mm. Is there a number that you're working with, David? Because some reports suggest that we could be looking at a $17, $18 billion of diamond jewellery market by 2030 in India. Yeah, we don't really project that far out. There's obviously, uh, I think, long-term projections never really, if you do get them right, they tend to be more luck than judgment. So uh, we don't make long-term projections. There are a lot of things that change in the world. But uh, uh, as I was saying with our team here in India, the, uh, the world is looking to India for growth. I think everyone's very optimistic about the market here. Mm. So, uh, it, yeah, we're very excited about it. David, how would you look at the price correction that we saw in the previous year? I mean, that definitely did support buying within India. Is the correction done with? And how would you look at prices for this year? Yeah, so 2021 and 22 and 22 were phenomenal uh, years for this industry. Uh, record years uh, for the industry. Uh, last year saw a bit of a correction over the first three quarters of last year. But really, we saw that start to turn around in the, the final quarter of last year. Uh, based around good demand, uh, a balancing of inventories around the world, uh, mm. less supply from the mining companies. So actually we saw uh, an upturn in prices in the last quarter and we're, we're continuing to see that this year. So now's probably a good buy time to buy diamonds <laughs> actually. So there's always a good opportunity. And uh, if you look at the numbers, now looks like a, a great opportunity. Mm. David, uh, are you putting any number to Indian growth as well? Because until time, we've been always talking about India as somebody who's processing, uh, cutting rough diamonds and ensuring that the world has it. Within India, the jewellery buying, uh, what kind of growth are you anticipating year on year? Yeah, I mean, again, higher growth than elsewhere in the world. I mean, okay. probably uh, no official numbers, but probably in the somewhere the 5 to 10% growth this year would be my uh, estimate on it. Uh, I think there's a lot of things in our favour here in this market. Um, so, yeah, we, we are, very, as I said earlier on, we're very optimistic about this market. There's a lot of investment in this market going on. Mm. Uh, a lot of retailers are, are growing and, and really uh, consolidating and, and uh, inspiring consumers. So, no, it's, um, and every time I'm here, I get more excited <laughs> by it. And it, it's great being here in, in person and seeing it for myself. David, also the other uh, issue with diamonds has been about uh, the availability within Indian markets and the way G7 clearly has been looking at it, trying to track every diamond that moves around. This, of course, comes in with Russia in picture. How have you seen that conversation go on? Yeah, it's uh, the supply chain for diamonds is global. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of discussion around the G7 sanctions. Uh, it's challenging because diamonds are... Uh, and not a product that is easy to trace. And there's a lot of blockchain developments going on to enable us to do that. Um, so there's a lot of things happening in the industry to make diamonds traceable. Uh, and the industry is working very hard to, to work with the G7 markets to figure out a way to do that. Um, the G7 is very keen to make sure that, that, doesn't, that whatever they do doesn't impact unnecessarily on non-G7 markets. And that includes India includes Southern Africa, Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, etc. Um, the G7 doesn't want to create challenges and difficult economies for um, because of what they do. So it's being done with a lot of consultation and, and that's great because uh, it is a complex industry mm. uh, and the G7 clearly has a goal that they want to achieve but is doing that with a lot of consultation within the industry. Absolutely. My final question is on the natural diamonds vis-a-vis -vis the lab-grown diamonds. I mean, that's a debate we've been hearing for a couple of years now, and uh, it doesn't die down. No, lab-grown <laughs> diamonds, uh, clearly I'm here to promote natural diamonds, but lab-grown diamonds will have a place in the world. Mm. Um, in the US, we are seeing, the US is the biggest market for lab-grown diamonds, but we're very much seeing them become much stronger in the likes of Walmart and Pandora, so from my perspective, uh, it's a different marketplace. It's a different uh, consumer. 
Um, the price difference is now somewhere close to 80 to 90 percent. So, uh, so that's very much differentiating them differently. So my focus is on natural diamonds, mm. uh, obviously. But uh, we very much see lab growns as being a, a different market, um, you know, good in their own right, but a very different market positioning to natural diamonds. Two parallel di markets which can perhaps coexist. Yeah, and they will coexist. <laughs> I, I don't think it's, that's the one thing I can, I can confidently say, they will coexist, <laughs> uh, but they will be different markets. One is a $3 billion old gem created by nature and is limited in terms of, you know, is scarce and mm. rare. The other isn't. So uh, they will coexist, but they'll just be a different, a different market. We will keep an eye on that. But David, thank you so much for joining us here at CNBC TV 18 studios. And with that, it's wrap on the Halftime Report. But stay tuned because Business Lunch will take all the action forward.